This music is just so fucking chill. Of course, that uh, because of that, when um, when all you just hear the first couple of chords every single time, it starts to sound like it's mocking you. It's like. Yeah, this game doesn't exactly have complicated combat mechanics. Oh, it's you! I wasn't sure if you'd escape those annoying little creatures. Of course, they wouldn't bother me, but here's a hint. Metal armor is fireproof, but a charge attack will take care of them. Yeah, I'll admit that, uh, I, 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 as I said, I do like that they did not front load their tutorial, but at the same time, this is stuff that either I would have I figured out already, or I would have fucking died. Like that's I think that's the first time I've heard that. But then again, I think it's the first time I've seen metal enemies. Oh wow, that was close. Yeah. And I like these sort of like challenging ones where it's like big enemies can only be killed with fire, but if they're protected by steel, they can't be hurt with fire. So you just gotta look for a part that's not protected by steel. And that is the true riddle of steel in Spyro. Psst. Spyro, want to know a secret? Use the triangle button when you want to zoom in and look around. Oh, your secret's safe with me. Okay, this is actually straight out of Super Mario 64 too, because it's like, this is, I think this, yeah, it functions almost exactly like how the uh, C up button works in Super Mario 64. I'm not sure whether that's trying to like help people who like just came from Mario 64, um, or maybe they were just like, hey, it worked well there. But the reason it worked well there was because like everything kind of felt big. You had to look around specifically to find stuff because a lot of times the camera was obnoxious as hell in that game. You know, whereas the camera here is annoying, but it's not anywhere near as bad as that one. I've always been fascinated by the fact that the big guys take one hit and that's it. I think the bosses are the only ones who take more than one hit. And even then, and it's kind of funny because some of them are, when they reveal their true form, it's like, what the hell? They're, they're characters who die from everything. Particularly like the first boss of this area. So, let's see. What are some game design theories I can read? Well, how about, uh, how about uh, just a question? What areas do you like exploring? I mean, discovery is supposed to be like an appeal of certain types of video games. And it's well, certainly one of the big appeals of this game where you just find stuff and see what it does. Or, and like see how it can get you more treasure, more dragons or anything. And for me, a big part of discovery in like Final Fantasy or, or, any, or any kind of game really is like, the look. I mean, that sounds like judging a book by its cover or something like that, but, um... <clears throat> Big enemies like this Gnork with the club cannot be charged. But a quick flame, that should defeat them. But the thing about other exploration games that I, I do like is... Uh, but, yeah, my preference of what I like out of an exploration game has less to do with graphics and more to do with art style. Like, I, to be quite honest, I hate, um, Metroid. The original Metroid. I, I the game just annoys the, c the crap out of me. Yeah, good. And the reason for that, and a big reason for that is the world is kind of boring. I know they wanted it to feel empty, but they don't make it fascinating. They don't make it interesting me for me to try to look around in. I've seen other NES games that have like impressive <coughs> art styles, so I know it's not exactly out of the uh, out of the, uh, out of the game or whatever the whatever the quote is out of the question that's what i meant to say i think an enemy is still alive or i forgot something down there most likely i forgot something down there because a lot of the times they hit st hide stuff like just almost out of sight uh wait. no yes i knew it you doubted me didn't you i know it i can see it in your eyes all right, so yes, I've collected everything. Uh, is that all the dragons? Yes. So now I will go on to the boss. 
I believe uh, the guy we rescued in front of the boss, he said, oh, you must go to one area before you go. And that's true. You can go to one area, and as, as long as you get to the exit gate, I don't even think you need to re rescue any dragons. You can uh, you can enter the Toasty's boss uh, region. But I didn't want to do that. I wanted to get all the treasures. So now I shall go to the boss. It took me a while to even find him because I didn't even notice like this little crevasse at first. So yeah. I'm gonna replay the dragon because if I'm not mistaken, he now does, has a little different message. Cool flash! Do that again! The artisan's boss has threw a portal behind me. You can challenge him now, if you feel you are ready. Alright. Time to fight Tosti! 3D! Well, yeah, actually, we are in 3D. So, yes, it's a 3D Toasty. Although, I'm not sure why they called him that. I don't remember him using fire, but then again, it has been, it has been a while since I've played this game. Not that it matters much, I still seem to be doing fine Shit! Still seem to be doing fine with, um, with the uh, exploration. It's funny how, like, you never realize how good you are at video games until you see someone who's really bad or inexperienced at video games play them. A lot of times I remember this area and I'm like, oh yeah, this area was fucking hard. You know, but then like I come up with the, the simplest strategy to like, all right, at what point does his invincibility time run out? You know, what range does this enemy, can this enemy not harm me? You know, and I just from, come up with easy strategies based on previous experiences in similar games. All right. So who knows, maybe this game taught me to to learn how to break other games. Shit, there's not like a dog right next to me. Oh shit! Dang it, I was too close but not getting accurate enough shots. Yeah, this are, these are some examples of enemies that don't die in one hit. Uh, more of them come up later. But uh, I'm not sure how many uh, more times you can hit them. I think that was the problem. The fact that you uh, your 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 flame has a lot of recovery time, so you can't like just immediately fire back. And by the time you try to fire back, they're in the air. Right. So this is the only dragon I think of this entire region. Nasty Nork has put one of his most devious henchmen in charge of the artisan world. Bring him on. I think I smell a barbecue. Be careful, Spyro. This boss has many tricks up his sleeve. Somebody pointed out that once that, uh, that, video, that too many video games like that try to be humorous all have to be for kids. Like... As if games that have to be funny are only for kids, as if kids are the only ones who can ever appreciate a good sense of humor. You know, like, this game is super light in tone. I mean, the boss just became a sh Like, it, it just became revealed that the boss is secretly a sheep on stilts. That's hilarious. Ah. Alright. Is this all? I think it is. Yay! We 100% of the entire region! Alrighty then. And it only took me 35 minutes or so. So yeah. The numbers uh, leaving are pretty exact. So yes. Victory charge! <sighs> Alright. But I think I was talking earlier about like... Uh, making about like what I what I kind of like in exploring in games where I where the appeal is sort of discovering stuff. Uh, well, I like games where you can find something interesting, whether that be in the landscape, 
Uh, yeah, it's just something that's interesting to discover. A landscape, char uh, character, storylines. You know, this is why I actually thought the discovery in Deus Ex Human Revolution was better than the obstacle courses, because the obstacle courses kind of got tiresome very quickly, whereas the the storylines I thought in, like, the side qu quest in, like, the city or whatever, those I thought were pretty interesting. You know, that it lends some, lends some good context to put some meaning behind a lot of your actions. Then again, that's also narrative, so it's doubling on two. But anyway, I shall save my game at this next dragon. So, next time on Let's Play... Uh, Welcome to Peacekeeper, Spyro. Hello, Lex Look how our treasure has been turned against us and stolen. Recover our treasure, Spyro. Collect treasure. Got it. But next time on Let's Play Spyro the Dragon... I will 100% this world too. So, see you guys then.